Hi YouTube, this is a video about assembly of uh, two-piece uh, 40 volt rims. Um, these are specifically Sony. It's probably be the same for like Forgi Auto, other companies like that. 40 volt means that uh, 20 are coming through the front of the face. That's going to be a bolt like this right here. Um, these bolts are called M8. Um, they're going to be M8 by 1.25 that is a thread pitch uh by 30 30 is the length i believe uh how it goes so it's m8 x 1.25 x 30. that's how you're probably going to find them and this is what you want for these kind of rims or at least what i did these are um rose gold electroplated rose gold i got these from uh s s r hardware they're in the uk they're one of the only people I could find that would do electroplating and uh, shipping is really fast. I put a link in the description, but I think I ordered these online on like a Tuesday and they came in. They sent me something. I was expecting not to see nothing for like a month, but I mean, it was like that Friday. And so and the shipping was like $20 and literally I had these within a week. So anyway, uh, I got the uh, other parts of the hardware too. These are going to be serrated. Uh, M8 nuts is on the site. So you want those with those, and then these other ones are called uh, let's see, set set socket, um, and they're going to be cups. That's what comes out of them. Cup meaning so on the top of it. These are the ones that go in from the back. You're going to stick the key in like that, at least to hold it. And then you go into the back of the rim like that, and the cup is going to be the bottom of it, and that goes into the face from that side. That's going to be 20 on that side, so that's 10, 20 on the front. That's why they're 40 volt rims. A lot of the forge companies are going to be the same. So like the barrels, there's a barrel already had it mounted on tire because of the uh, the day that it was on, and they wanted the place wasn't open on the weekend. So anyway, it looked kind of crazy, but. Anyway, so the face is going to go in like this, like this, and uh, anyway, so the only other thing that you might need out of that is grease, and because you definitely, if you've ever de-pieced one of these things, for the love of God, use grease. That's marine grade grease. I mean, this is really cheap. I mean, you just want to dip the tip of it in there and go in, just the parts that are going to thread, because trying to de-piece these things after these we're probably on there for about a decade. Um, if you want to see what they look like, if you want to see what they look like, uh, the one that I took off of it. Ugh, good grief. Is that. That is gone. That's, that's crazy. There's so much corrosion. It, it wasn't holding air. It looked like a disaster. I don't even think if you sandblast all this stuff that it would ever even be usable again. I don't know. But anyway, they definitely got they definitely got other use out of them. So anyway, as far as with the uh, piecing these things back together, so you want to pick up the face of the rim so they look like on the back. Um, looks like a big metal frisbee. You want to come over here and uh, let's see. It's not really the right way to go in there. Usually on the, uh, the the new barrel, you're gonna at least the ones that I got, they're gonna have one notch cut out of them, and the rest of it's just gonna be pretty much looks the same. The one notch cut out is to run an air an air piece through it, so that that way it's easier to do if you want to. If not, you can just twist it a little bit and. Uh, It'll cover it, it's going to cover it instead of having a hole go through it. Just like that. So that's it in there. So you want to start, you know, with these pieces. Like with some of these bolts like this first, just to get them going. You want to cross them, you would like two here. Then do two here, there, and there. Just enough to hold it in there. So, let's see. If 
you drop it in like that and you go in with your uh your hand and let's say that you want to dip it in grease first like that just a little bit you can go just smudge it in there you can also see these things meet up too because these are these are tough all right and these are not as tough as this but this is really tough so the way it's machined you can see once the pieces hit the register the center part you can you can see it's solid in there if you have a bent piece or something's wrong in between then you shouldn't have a bent piece if it's new but if there's something wrong with that you're going to see some kind of discrepancy it's going to look like part of the sandwich is hanging out the side anyway so you want to drop it in you want to connect on the other side with your nut and you just want to hand tighten it on that end and by the time they asked me they said i get it those are sweet look in there electroplated how are you going to keep it from me not come off they're not going to come off you don't really have to do any cranking on this side if anything you use this just to hold hold it in place and so the real cranking that you're going and you're not going to do a lot of cranking on it either like literally that's the mistake that most people get when whenever they rebarrel these things is uh they put an impact on it or something stupid like that and they don't have it set right for the love of god don't do that man if you depiece these it it was going to take a miracle you know to get these things undone which i'll have in another video but like it would take a miracle because they have corrosion they have everything else in them they don't want to go i mean it's, it's terrible so once you feel and start to bite and these are serrated on the end you go back in and let me do two of them on each side so i don't have this thing move on me so you can just hand tighten them in at first like so Oh, by the way, I'm from Arkansas, if you can't tell from the accent. I know I have to sound terrible on this. Uh, let's see. And so the socket that I'm tightening these in there with, the 5 16 on the uh, on the face bolts, and the back of it, this is going to be like a 13 millimeter. So anyway, that's two. You can do two on the other side to get it going. And that should hold at least enough for you to be able to stand the wheel up and do some other stuff. Putting them together makes it, it looks like smooth as glass, but let me tell you, de-piecing these things is a whole nother battle. I mean, I'll make another video for that, but man, it's, uh, it's terrible. And so the going thing is, if you ever, if you bought a set of these, and so you call us on them, or whoever, and, they, and you're like, hey, uh, these things are starting to chip, whatever. The warranty's way out of the picture. Don't even think they're gonna try to help you with that. But anyway, as much as these things are, so they say you gotta have a special tool. What that special tool is, is a socket that they had somebody, APR, somebody make them that makes bolts that made it proprietary where it's not gonna fit anything that you got. Or you have to go to eBay and buy something that some guy shaved down or did something because the chances you find somebody with one of these, they keep it highly guarded, which is very smart as a business uh, thing, because they'll certainly offer to fix them in any condition. But man, it's just, it's expensive. And you know, you, know, you get what you pay for. It's like buying another set of rims all over again. But anyway, the back of this, when you buy these from like these bolts are from SSR, these are normal tools that I'm spinning it with. They're not proprietary. They don't have weird splines on them or, or whatever. You just want to barely tighten them just enough for it to bite 
And the bottom side is really going to do that for you. You don't have to. You definitely don't need an impact. Now, that's not as tight as I'm going to get them. Now you can at least flip it up so you can see it from the back. So now when you do want to do, when you feed them through and so forth, any cranking that you want to do on the bolts, do it on this and you ain't got to do much. That's about it. <laughs> at least to get them going. You can almost hold this one with your thumb because once the serrated bolt gets in there, it's good. So like that. All right, well, that's tight enough right now for you to feed the rest of them through and so forth. Now, as far as these things, similar to the same thing, you just want to dip them in uh, grease. If you can't ever, <laughs> you can have probably too much grease, but uh, you definitely need to use a little bit of it. So these go into the face. So what you want to do is stick them in like that, kind of. You can hand tighten them, you know, a little bit, but you want to take this and, um, let's see, kind of just want to get in there and tighten it about as good as you can. That's going to put it into the face of the rim. And so then you need to go in behind that and put a nut on the end of it from there. So, and it don't take just a whole lot of pressure on these either because they just, in the long run, it doesn't hold it any better as long as you just do it to spec. I think I read somewhere the spec was somewhere around like 17 uh, something pounds per bolt. And uh, I was like, that ain't very much, but honestly it is. If you go with 40 bolts all the way around, it comes out even. I mean, like it, it works because putting an impact on it Trust me, you don't want to de-piece these things after they've been <laughs> after they've been on the car for two or three years. Try a decade. These things are old and uh, they're good looking wheels, but man, they're old and there was a lot of corrosion in there and other stuff that it's really hard to really not much you can do about it if you actually drive the vehicle. But anyway, so that's about all you want to do with that one. And I think the same ones fit on this. If not, these are reusable. You always want to get new hardware, but uh, like some of these, uh, the only difference is they're flat on the end. You go serrated or flat, you really don't need a serrated one, but uh, I don't think, at least on this one, some people might think you do, but it just, you could use a flat one on this end. Just tighten it on by hand as far as you can go in there. And then by the time you get to the end, you know, you probably want to use a wobble on these. I don't think I got one sitting in front of me, but uh, you know, this is 13 millimeter, three eighths. Uh, like you want to use a wobble so it bends in. And a wobble will do it, you know what I mean? Because you really ain't got to crank a whole, you know, about the same amount of pressure that you did on the front with these. That's it. That's it. That's all you really want to do. So that's how those go in there. And then uh, this, of course, is from the face of it. You do them all the way around, and uh, you should be good. I don't know what I'm going to do with the faces yet on these things. I knew that the barrels had to go because there, were, there was nothing I could do at the point of that because it wasn't riding good. It wasn't the fact they weren't holding air. You had to put air in them, you know, because of the chipping and, and whatever, and flaking of the chrome. And um, so anyway... I don't know, I might do something different with the faces and so forth. I just want to see if it changes the ride first. That's what it looks like right there with it already done on. And I did drive it with the old one and the new, the new one on this side. And it fixed about 50% of the ride. So hopefully this will fix the other part. All right, that's all I got.